Hello. This is Julia. I was going to talk a little bit about flow release and your acrylics and how you can get some nice abstract effects by killing that surface tension of the water. So I have some, I have a cup of water here. I have some alcohol and I have some flow release, which uh, Golden now calls wetting agent. Um, and the, the proportion is about three teaspoons per quart. This is half a quart right now. So I did, I actually did two teaspoons. So you can go as much as, for a quart, you can go as much as six teaspoons. That's on the high side. Remember, this stuff will get sticky and not dry very well if you have too much in the water. So you have to be careful to not overdo it. So right now I put two teaspoons in this amount and I gently, gently stirred it. If you whip it up in a frenzy, it will get frothy and you don't want that to happen. So it kind of basically does what detergent does and breaks up the surface tension. Okay, so I have a piece of, a piece of canvas board here from Canson. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little bit of the, this and wet it. Now the canvas board is got a canvas texture. It is a little bit more absorbent than straight gessoed canvas, but I think you should get the same result. The nice thing about acrylics is you don't even need to have gesso on your canvas. Okay, so I put that on there and I'm gonna take a color, I think I'll take alizarin crimson here and I'm just gonna drop it here. And of course you can dilute your paints too. I just, I'm just using the straight high, high flow paint colors and you can see how it starts to bleed out like that. Now I can add another color, something that's gonna go nicely with it, the anthroquinone here. Maybe I'll do some over here. Just a lovely bleeding effect. I can turn it and move it around. But in order to make it move even more, I can also use isopropyl al alcohol. And I have a little bit here in a, in a little cap, a pipette or a straw might be better for this, but this is what I got right now. And you can see this gorgeous thing that's happening. Um, I'm gonna try to do it right in the center. Do not wanna do that at all. So now it's just going, going, to, going to town, moving around. This is a bit stubborn, doesn't wanna do anything. I have my palette knife here. I'm gonna play with it. Cause remember you can use other things. Apologize for the camera movement. Don't be afraid to experiment. It could be just a heavier pigment so it doesn't wanna move like my anthroquinone blue does. Now once I move that all around, I could try So flow release is one of those things that's used in marbling. At least I use it. There's a product called Photo Flow that photography, photographers get for when they used to develop photos. And that's what that was. I'll try a little turquoise over here. It's blobbing up. And I can also, I'm gonna just dip this in my water here. See if I can affect it. Oh yeah, look at that, it's moving around. or come in and cut through it just to do some weird stuff. I 
and then you just let it let it dry. You can always use a little bit of paper towel to pull up some stuff you don't like, or you could just smush it in if you like that effect. So you can get kind of a staining look, like so. So don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah, maybe that's as far as you want to go with the, the spreading, and you just come and dab it all out again. And there you have it. You have something to start with. Okay, so just to review, that's the water. I did, I did a cup with two teaspoons, and I could have gone up to three, two teaspoons of my flow release or um, wetting agent, it's called now. I threw in some isopropyl later to make it move a little bit more. And I'm using these high flow acrylic paints, but I think you can mix your regular paints in a tube with this mixture as well, and then you'll have it all kind of working toward what you're, what you're doing. So have fun, experiment, and good luck.